Hello, good day. Welcome back to Coding with V. And today, we're going to look at how to install Misty, a UI for Olama, on either Windows, Macs, or Linux. And then give it a little trial to make sure that everything is working well. So, without further ado, let's jump in and get started. So in my command line here, I'm going to create a directory for episode four. We are not going to actually develop any code really, but just to keep things sane, I'm going to create an episode four directory, change to it, and I'll touch this file saying no code. Um, this is just so that when I commit this repository, this directory is still going to be there because otherwise Git would not commit an empty directory. Now that I've done that, let's go do the real thing. Let's go to our browser and navigate to misty.app. So if you just type in msty.app in your browser, press enter, you'll get the Misty website. Now, what is Misty? Well, if you recall, when we install Olama, we're able to use it from the command line. We can do Olama space run, space a model name, and it loads up the model and give us an interactive terminal UI where we can type a prompt with and get the result back from the model. And I said it out there, a nicer way to interact with Olama, and this is one of the UIs that allow you to do this. Come with many, many more features that you wouldn't be able to do at the command line, like keeping the history of your prompts and all that stuff, and you will see. But for today, we'll just install and test it and make sure everything is set up correctly. All right, so click on download for your appropriate operating system. It's pretty straightforward, especially for Mac and Windows. Um, I'm on a Mac Intel, so I'm going to click that, download it, and then once it's downloaded, double click on it, I'm going to drag it into the application directory, typical Mac package install, and it's done. For Windows, well, same thing. You double click on the installer and we'll go through it. Linux, almost similar, except if you look on the Linux installation for the Linux install, the four options you have there are for either an app image or a Debian file, but they're all for GPU, either NVIDIA GPU or AMD. But what if you have a CPU only? Well, that's the, my case. So instead, you click on that very first link and go to the Linux installation page. There, you'll click on download on the left-hand side and then navigate to Debian. And then you'll see either an app image or no CPU. I'm going to use the Debian no CPU. Download that. And once it's downloaded, you can double click it in the download directory even in Linux and it will start up the installer. But I'll go to the command line and I'm going to use dpkg to install it. And so you just type sudo dpkg space minus i for install space and the Debian file, which in this case is misty, the misty Debian file. Press enter and it's going to ask you for your password, sudo password, and you enter it and it's installed. And that's it. That's how you install Misty. Once you have Misty installed, just start it up. And it looks the same almost in every operating system. So the important thing is once you start up Misty and you see the screen for and you see the screen for either a local AI setup or a remote, this is important. Click remote. Now the reason why you want to click remote and not click local is because if you do local, Misty includes Olama itself, so it's going to install its own Olama, set it up, download yet another M, uh, model, which we already have Olama installed. It's going to run Olama on another port instead of 11.434, which is the Olama default. So we don't want two Olama running because we don't want to imagine another model. So we're going to say remote. Additionally, if you look at the bottom, you'll see that oh, it detected that I already have Olama models installed. It's asking, hey, do you want me to use that? Don't click that either because what it's going to do is again try to use its own Olama and try to load your models that you already downloaded. You might think, oh, well, this is accepted. It's just going to reuse my model. Well, I noticed that there could be some issues with that. So, again, best to don't mess with that. Just that you want to connect to a remote, um, a remote model. All right. Once you click that, now it's time for us to set up. Um, or connection to the Olama that's not really remote, but it's remote to this Misty application, right? But it's still running on a computer. So from the drop down list, you see by default it's an open API. 
towards the bottom you'll see it says olama just select that give it any the name is any text i just put my olama <laughs> but you could use anything you want then for the url just put http colon forward slash forward slash localhost colon 11434 for the port number and that's it then you click add and that's it and notice how it's going to say and it successfully loaded the model and it loads the model you have now remember i have a ton of models so your default model is not going to be the same as mine but you can click the drop down there at the bottom for the chat window and you can see that you can select whichever model you want now up to the top left you may see a something look like a folder it might be called miscellaneous mine i've been using a llama for a while so my interface might look a little bit different than yours but either way you have a new chat window and you don't have to worry about it and now we'll just stick with the default settings and not change anything and so if you down the bottom select the model you want to use let's say we select Gemma 3 4 billion and we type hello how are you doing I press enter the model is going to respond um, after the model respond let's try and do something more interesting let's ask the model to write us a simple go web application if you type that press enter and i'm going to speed it up here because it took about 10 minutes actually 11 minutes plus so i'll speed it up like 10 times or more so that you know we don't wait have to wait too long but you can see it's spitting out the go code and notice how even though it's using Markdown, just like we saw in our previous example where we use Olamo at the terminal, notice how this UI understands Markdown. And so it's able to format, you know, the bold and italics and all that sort of stuff um, correctly, unlike what we had before, which just sort of looked like the raw dump, okay? Um, and so, yep, at the end of this, um, you can see it's just stop. And so if you need to stop the model at any time, you could press another square button to the bottom right. Otherwise, you let the model keep, you know, right now it's output, and then when it's finished, then that's it. You can type another prompt. Now, why might you want to be able to stop the model? Is maybe it's taking too long, it's generating more text than you want, and then there's rare cases, if you have really small model, and they get confused and they keep generating the same thing over and over repeatedly to no end so they're sort of getting trapped into this loop and that's it we've done three things we've installed misty we have configured to can talk to our local olama install and then we have verified that we can use a model and have it generate output so until the next video feel free to play around but until the next video that's it um, if you enjoy the content, please give a thumbs up to the video, leave a comment. If you return a subscriber, thank you so much. If you haven't subscribed and you like what you see, I'd love to have you as a subscriber. Please take a second to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so you notify when I post new videos. Um, that's it. Take care. Stay safe. See you in the next video. Bye.